10 seconds up. We're about to start, guys. All of you that are watching, welcome. Three, two, and one. And we're live. We are live for our first ever ADV podcast. It's pretty exciting stuff, isn't Incredibly it? Incredibly exciting to be here with all of you guys watching. Those of you who are watching, thank you very much. And thank you for the people for the past like two years that have told us to do this. It took a long time to set up, and we're finally off the ground, hopefully. Yeah, we've got a couple of very interesting things to talk about today. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually really just can't wait to, to get into the whole thing. So what okay. do you say we start off with our first segment? Sounds good. What's new? So, Winston, i got to ask you first. Okay. Now, a good thing about this podcast is we can actually talk a little bit more about our personal lives, right? Yep. So, what's new with you? What's new with me is I've been working on a car. Okay. Now, um, for those of you who aren't familiar, although Seamilk and I are currently traveling a lot between Asia and the States, we've decided that we're going to have a base in the United States of mm -hmm. America on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more stable given the current political climate, so... We've decided to kind of work here. So in between travels, in between filming, in between doing all this stuff, I've been pursuing one of my passions, my hobbies, which is mechanics. Nice. And I'm having so much fun. Bought a really cheap car, one of my dream cars, because I love American cars, and I've been getting my hands dirty and uh, scratching my knuckles, and I've got scars and calluses, and that's what I've been doing. How Don't about give you? away too much. No, no. We're going to reveal that at some point. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, my parents-in-law just left. Mm. Uh, they were visiting us here, and it was actually a huge help because they were helping take care of the kids and stuff. But my wife got this in her head that, like, it was really important for them to be there. And now that they're gone, she's like, everything is so much easier <laughs> because it was literally like babysitting the whole time. Mm. You know what I mean? So you had the situation where the parents-in-law would be like, we need to go to this park today. So I call him an Uber. I have to give him a ride, or Vivi has to give him a ride, right? So that was uh, that was pretty harrowing, but it's done. It's over, and the house is really clean now because there's not like vegetables and fruit like in the corners everywhere. There's a thing about at least from Cantonese people because my parents-in-law do the same thing. They love to put things on the floor. Why? And it's like they'll put rocks behind the door, throw coins in the corner, and just randomly, like when they go buy vegetables. Right. I mean, they're neat and they're clean. Right. But they'll take newspaper and put it on the floor outside the kitchen and then put the vegetables on the newspaper on the floor rather than up on the kitchen counters and stuff. I don't know why they do it. But Cultural it's, differences. It's infuriating. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know what we're going to do in this segment as well is we're mm -hmm. going to cover a couple clips that we thought were interesting in Chinese media. Yes. And the first clip is actually going to come from a girl who does uh, Douyin, which is TikTok. Yes, Douyin. And she's famous in America by being a Chinese girl in China and right. spreading views about China. All right. So we're going to review that clip. Okay. So let's take a look at this first clip here. Um, right. Here it goes. Let's watch. Hello, guys. I'm Karen. Uh, recently, I received a lot of personal letters asking me whether Chinese people eat dogs. So I want to clarify that Chinese people don't eat dogs. Eating dogs only exists in the old, old China in the last century. But nowadays, Chinese people don't eat dogs. Dogs are our good friends and we will certainly not hurt them. Let alone to eat that. Okay, well, we've got a little map to show you. If we can bring that up here. Okay. Now, this was you. We, we recorded this yesterday. We did a screen record. We basically went on to Baidu Maps, mm -hmm. which is like Google Maps in China, and we searched Go Rou Dian, which right. means dog meat restaurant or right. whatever. This is in Beijing. Whole bunch. That's the capital of China. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but we're not going to go through this blow by blow because we we also have in the search, anyone who understands Chinese can look in the background. We also search Shanghai, which is the most cosmopolitan city in yeah, China. Yeah, it's up there right now. Yeah, there we go. And there's a bunch of dog meat restaurants mm -hmm. in Shanghai. Uh, Guangzhou, Tianjin, mm -hmm. Huizhou. Look, the fact of the matter is people in China eat dogs. Sure. I guess the issue I have with this and the thing mm -hmm. that I find... I. We have different perspectives on this whole thing. Yes. We're not going to get into the morality of the whole situation. No, no, no. I mean, eating dogs is whatever it is. It happens in yes, China. And absolutely. That's, that's what, I'm not going to say pissed me off, but that's what got me like really frustrated when I saw this because it's just a blatant lie, right? Yes, yes. Every Chinese person I know in China has had dog meat or at least know that it, it exists, right? It's very common. North, South, East, West. Yeah. Dog meat exists in China, okay? Yeah. So I, my perspective, I think we disagree a little bit on this, but... Yeah. 
my perspective is that she's blatantly lying to everyone to get everyone in the West and everyone that speaks English to be like, oh, I'm so stupid. That was so racist of me. I yeah. can't believe I thought Chinese people eat dogs, right? I, I've got a different take on this. I honestly believe that she thinks people in China don't eat dog. Okay. The reason is media is so controlled in China that right. all this bad news, because you hear about the Yulin Dog Festival sure. and you hear, I mean, you've been there. Yeah. And, you know, we've, we've all seen the terrible things that happened. I've seen it with my own eyes. Um, and a lot of our friends, their dogs have been stolen, their pets mm. to be cooked and tortured before, all this stuff. It's terrible. It happens. But because this is negative media, it gets blocked in China. Sure. So you don't see this kind of news, on, you know, on the TV or you don't hear it on the radio. It's all blocked. Right. And Chinese people, the, one, the Chinese people I know, usually lead very insular lives. Sure. sure. So she looks like the kind of girl who lives in this happy-go-lucky little bubble of... Um, you sort of social media and you know reading her WeChat posts and everything's happy and mm. China seems like all about LV bags and you know n- yeah. and I, th- I honestly think that she just hasn't traveled around enough mm. because a lot of people on my dog meat video are like I'm Chinese I've never eaten dog I've never seen dog meat and I'm like okay where do you live and they'll say some small city I go there on buy do maps and I search for dog meat restaurants and they're everywhere. Right, and this is not you to know? prove the point that like, <laughs> you're wrong. Yeah. Every Chinese person eats dogs. We know they don't. Of course, of course. not. Yeah. And it's probably in the slight minority, but it's very, very, very common. And your perspective yeah. is interesting, but I, I really have been bombarded so much recently with like soft power stuff. Mm. And I really think that the Chinese government is really going out of their way to try to push this kind of rhetoric that no, all these negative stereotypes that you hear about, it doesn't happen. Okay, say that on TikTok. I'm a little bit more tinfoil hat about that. I think. Well, I mean, if if it ever does come up into question, both you and I have a lot of footage of dog meat and people yeah. eating dogs in China sure. that we filmed over the years. All over China, north, sure. south, east, west. So it's not like a, no, they don't. They absolutely do this. This poor girl's just uh, misinformed. Fair enough. Okay. okay. So we have another clip that we're yeah. going to look at, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what this one is. <clears throat> All right, so this simultaneously cracks me up and also makes me want to die. This is a grandfather pushing their child over the ledge on a swing on a building, very clearly. Yes. You clearly see that. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you, Yeah. why, why can that happen? <laughs> I, you know, from my point of view, things like safety are, are very often overlooked in China. Sure. I mean, work, workplace safety is just not a thing. Right. Um, I don't know what it is about Chinese people. They just do things mm. because they feel safe and confident to sure. do things because they're like, oh, well, they they don't ever get to see the repercussions of these things because right. I feel like when there is a work safety incident or someone gets you know killed working a machine or something, mm. then that person didn't learn a lesson because they're dead. So they Fair can't enough. pass on the thing and then no one talks about it. So they just keep doing it. I don't know. A little more like maybe... Uh, general broad perspective maybe, Fuyo. On that. maybe it's Fuyo you know, um, fate uh, so basically mm. I think that the person taking the video with their cell phone out their mm. window right, obviously thought it was ridiculous and I think yeah. the majority of Chinese people is gonna, are going to think that's, that there's a reason it's viral right? right but the I think this is what happens is that the uneducated group of grandparents are now taking care of the grandchildren ah, predominantly right yeah. so the common sense isn't there in that generation but that middle, the middle age generation are all off factory jobs, office jobs, things like yeah. this. So they can't like instill that like sense of safety, right? We we did make a video about the lost yeah. generation, and right. it is true that particular age group they're very uneducated because basically that was during the bad times. Sure. And there was no school. Right. You know. Right. And you were basically killing your teacher or setting your local temple on fire. Sure. Sure. So you didn't have time to learn about common sense safety. Right. That that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I hope they like call the cops or something. Yeah, I mean, I've seen that, but at the same time, if I look at my sort of my wife's parents, they've got way more common sense than that. So, yeah, so obviously yeah. that's a very <laughs> ridiculous situation. <laughs> yeah, that was kind yeah, of funny. Yeah, anyway. Uh, cool. but anyway, time, shall we move on? Let's do the next segment. Okay. All right, so next segment is now our main segment, which is it's all about soft power. Okay, so the soft power, we're going to have this every week where we talk about something that's basically absolutely ridiculous and it, it's basically to raise awareness mm-hmm. now this whole episode is all about hypocrisy right sure you came up with this idea because why well there's this issue that i have is that when i first moved to china 
China wasn't exporting any sort of media to the outside world about itself, right? Right. The Western media came to its own conclusions about China, and that was it. And that was kind of a big inspiration for us to make videos as well, because sure. it was a lot of negative press about China, right? Agreed. It's completely 180 now, mm. and now you have Chinese people in support of the government, the CCP, right? Mm -hmm. Using soft power and kind of making this rosy image of the Chinese government abroad by using Western social media, which That's is blocked. blocked in China. That's the thing, because it's all good and well for, say, uh, an American person to sit and make YouTube videos about, like, America is am amazing and great. That's all fine and all that. But imagine um, YouTube was blocked in America. Sure. And they had to actually circumvent, like, <laughs> censorship rules to go right. outside to use a, a website to right. say, America's great. Meanwhile, right. so I get it. So it's all about hypocrisy. So there's this very nasty video that was released a little while ago, mm -hmm. uh, targeted at me actually, by um, a Chinese woman mm -hmm. who lives in America, who makes similar sort of, you know, like she makes a lot of political commentary. Let me stuff. give a little background on yeah. that. So I yeah, didn't do a it. deep dive or anything, but I went through her channel and she makes videos in Chinese, Yeah. No, except for this one that we're about to look yeah. at, in Chinese with Chinese subtitles, not English subtitles, right? Yeah. And she makes them in critique of Democrats, Republicans, Taiwan, independence, this kind of stuff from America, which honestly, I have no problem with. Like, sure. you can say whatever the hell you want, but to promote a government and a leadership style that blocks your ability to have that free speech on these platforms doesn't make any sense to me. And here's the part. We're going to show you a couple of clips so we can just critique them. Sure. We haven't scripted this. We're just going to look at them and we're going to go at it. But it should be fun. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. We're going to show you these clips, but before we do, it's just kind of funny that she took exception to me making just critical videos of China, not like terribly critical, just discussing life in China. And she obviously disagrees with me, but she can't handle it. Right. So this is the hypocrisy. So let's take a look. Okay. What do we got? In the end, China is my country, not his country. I know China. He doesn't know China. He can stay there forever. I can tell you, he doesn't know China. China doesn't owe him anything, but he owes everything he has to China. All right, so <clears throat> I actually made a video about this. It's like you cannot have an opinion about China. Right. This and is kind of she, she literally said that it doesn't matter how long you live in China, right. can live there forever. You can't know China because you're not Chinese. First bit of hypocrisy here mm -hmm. is that let's just assume, let's just be unfair yeah. and assume that she is now an American citizen. She's been here for a while, right? Yeah. I can promise you she would proudly and easily throw around that label. Is it? Yes, I'm American. I'm a Chinese American, right? Mm. I'm Chinese, but I'm also American, right? Sure. But now you can't have anything to do with China because of either the color of your skin or where you're from, right? Sure. So that's the first bit of hypocrisy. It doesn't make any sense that it doesn't matter how long you stay there. You can be fluent in Chinese, have a Chinese wife, have Chinese friends, and your entire life and livelihood, like ours yeah, was, yeah. is in China. Now you can't have an opinion? It doesn't I think, make sense. Yeah, especially since she's in America making critical right. videos about America. Sure. So wait, maybe we, if, we, if we said by the same token, but you're not American, America, well, you could say America is right. my country. You will never yeah, understand never, my country. You will never know America because you're not American. You can live here forever. No one's going to say that. No, it's absolute nonsense. And that's why I think it's just hilarious to look at this because she honestly believes that she's allowed to have an opinion about America, but... I'm not allowed to have an opinion about China because I'm not Chinese. Sure. It's and fun. using Western social media to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Which she can't do. And no. if she tries to talk about Taiwan independence in China on Chinese media, it'll immediately be censored. Right. Even right. if it's pro, like it doesn't matter. pro you can't the Beijing that, government, dude. you just can't mention those no. words. No. Anyway, let's see, see what the next little bit is. <clears throat> can't wait. <laughs> he claimed he can read Chinese pretty good. I have heard he's broken and hard to understand the Chinese. From my experience, it's much more difficult to learn than English, especially the characters. So it's, it's hard for me to believe he can read Chinese characters very well. Mm. Mm. But exactly. that's a bit ridiculous. Bad. Yeah, I mean, come on. Now it's down to personal insults. Mm. I mean, look, whatever's wrong with this lady, I'm not going to go out and try and attack her. I don't really know who she is. Mm. I'm not going to no. say your your English is awful and, you know, it's hard for me to believe that you understand what I'm saying. You know, I'm just going to listen to her opinion and I respect the fact that she has an opinion. No need to go to personal insults, but this does 
shows something very important here. And that is this idea that most Chinese people have, that Chinese is too hard for Westerners to understand. Mm. And they stand behind that. Now, I don't know what I did with it. There it is. You know, you and I, we do a lot of traveling around America these days, <clears throat> even other countries. UK, doesn't matter where you go, you will find stuff like this, which is a Chinese language newspaper that is released. And you know, the, the kind of stuff that's published in here is things on how to cheat your taxes, things on how to get the best deals here, how to do the system. There's a lot of stuff that you should not be publishing, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but they do it because of the language barrier. Mm -hmm. There's this language barrier that Chinese people believe is impenetrable mm -hmm. by the West. And for them to think that a foreigner like myself can actually read Chinese or like you, as you can see, it boggles her mind. Mm -hmm. She can't believe that I can understand. Chinese. Sure. I've said this before, but I had a, I had a friend who was a professor of Chinese. He's yeah. a white guy from the UK. Yeah. Works with BBC now. He, um, he went to study in, uh, what was it, Fudan University and ended yeah. up getting his uh, PhD mm -hmm. in traditional Chinese, classical Chinese. So he's right. teaching it to Chinese people because tons of characters you don't study, right? No, no. It's no. like ancient history stuff. But it's obviously true. his Chinese is beyond fluent. Yeah. When he would go to buy something, people would quiz him, be like, I bet you can't read. Your Chinese spoken Chinese is perfect, but I bet you can't read. He'd like break down the character, <laughs> what radical came from where, from what dynasty and all this kind yeah, of stuff, yeah. Oracle Bone stuff. And they're like, no, 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 you don't, you don't fully, you'll never fully understand that. So that's the language thing. I mean, yeah. with the whole newspaper thing, I think anyone should be able to have whatever language yeah. newspaper they want. But yeah, this veil of like secrecy that there's some sort of great wall that outsiders will never understand, you know? And I, I want to bring the hypocrisy back sure. here because uh, foreigners are not allowed to publish magazines oh, or, or newspapers in China. No. If you do, there's a huge... Thing. You have to send it to like a censorship mm -hmm. board. It mm -hmm. has to be approved by the government and by the local government, then by the Beijing government. Because I did try to start a newsletter when I worked for a company a long time ago. Sure. And we couldn't get it off the ground because right. it was too much hassle to get and it. And it's a basic you know. thing that you were used to being able to do back home. Sure. Right? Right. Absolutely. So the, the unfortunate thing is like um, it's this double standard hypocrisy again that they can put whatever they want in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. Which here. is fine. Yeah. I've got nothing wrong with that. But right. the fact that they're using freedom of speech, Western freedom of speech, to push soft power in these magazines and, and uh, newspapers that are saying like, oh, America sucks or China's right, great. Right, right. But you can't do that. You couldn't even have a flag. I couldn't <laughs> have an American flag next to a Chinese flag at my English training center. Yeah, they came and told you to take it down. So get rid of it. Yeah, anyway, let's see what the next little clip is. It's fascinating, this stuff. Such a good look Since into the Since I psyche. don't yeah. know, it's sure not he's a racist, so uh, I tried to find out more about this guy by watching more videos from his channel. Racist or not, China hit her or not, I don't have enough evidence since I don't want to waste more time to watch his videos. <laughs> wait, 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 yeah. hold on. This is, that's a little unfair, isn't it? So I'm gonna bust all these labels out and yeah. then hide behind, oh, I didn't actually say that, but by the way, I didn't even watch his videos. I know. Um, this is a, an unfortunate thing, and I don't want it to look like I'm jumping to defend myself here, but the fact of the matter is um, you, they get told an idea, hey, this guy's bad, all right, he's bad. Right. You know, he's, so I'm just going to say it, whether I actually put in, put in the research or not, whether sure. I actually try to figure it out or not. Right. It's kind of silly. It is a little bit ridiculous, yeah. isn't it? Anyway, let's see the next clip. He's coming from a middle to lower class. He tried to say it's middle class, but obviously it's small towards lower class, since he said he had he had to work his butt off um, to get a rubbish car, and he was landed. He was uh, handed nothing when he came to China. Uh, he wasn't put through college, etc. Even though I don't want to describe anyone as losers or. A wet trash, but I think Mr. Sturzo was not a successful person. So this actually want to I actually want to go into this from a cultural standpoint. Right. Okay. Right. This is a big cultural thing here. And it, I got a, I got a little like a uh, warning flag when I saw her smirk. And this is mm -hmm. why she had a smirk. Mm -hmm. There is an idea in China that the more money you have, 
the better you are, the more successful you are. That's true in any country around sure. the world, right? Sure. But China is, out of the 42 countries I've been to in the world, is the most classist country I've ever been to, right? Absolutely. People hate poor people in China. Like, yeah. there's no intermingling there. The way the housing is set up, the districts of the city and stuff, it can be like that to a certain degree in other countries, but China is like the polar extreme of that, right? So I agree. When she's explaining the fact that you are a low-class person, a normal Western person would be like, that's that's pretty rude, right? You can't, sure. why would you judge someone based on their possessions, right? Yeah. That's exactly what's very normal in China. I think it's kind of normal in a Western, she, she uses the example that I had to work really hard right. to buy my first car. That smirk? Yeah. She's laughing at the fact that you had to work. Yeah, it's like, oh, my parents gave me a Mercedes or something, right? In mainland China, mm -hmm. this is how it works, at least with mm -hmm. my wife's friends and stuff. Yeah. The more, like they made fun of her because she had to go work for a company, right? right? She right. put in her hours and stuff and she had a good job. Yeah. Then she could buy something that a middle class person would appreciate, right? Right. right? They got everything from their parents and for them, that, that's like bragging rights, right? Yeah. I didn't have to do anything, yeah. right? So I don't know her class, so I'm not going to assume her class, right? Even yeah. though that coffee maker looks a little bit trashy, but um, I'm not going to assume anything. Costco special. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not gonna, I have a Costco. <laughs> Me too. I love here. it. <laughs> um, I'm not going to assume anything because I can't tell, right? Yeah. Number one. Number two, it doesn't matter, yeah. right? That shouldn't make your opinion more valid because you're richer than somebody. Right. I know. The fact that she's, again, attacking my character, calling right. me low class and stuff, just shows the mentality that the, the, the fact is the videos that I make are just observations. Sure. Right? Sure. I occasionally get things wrong, but the observations are there and it's truth. Right. 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 If she had a problem with the truth, so I speak, she would, you know, directly address that. But instead of trying to address what I say, mm -hmm. she's trying to attack my character to bring bring me down, basically. Right. Right. But yeah, the, it's interesting to see this cultural. It is. That's fun thing. to pick apart, actually. Yeah. Anyway, let's see what she has to say next. Can't wait. Yeah, do you guys mind if I interject? Please. Go for please. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say that it also makes no sense with her argument that you, she's saying you owe China everything. Yeah. But at the same time is using the fact that you are literally self-made against you, mm -hmm. which is contradictory because you would think if you came from nothing and you built a life, that means that you owe nothing to anyone. That's a super good point. I didn't even yeah. think about it yeah. like that. Yeah. Well said, Dian. Yeah. And, and then the fact that she's saying that like Chinese is much harder to learn than English, mm -hmm. yeah. that should also be a point for you, not against you. Because right, because you do true. speak Chinese, yeah. right? Yeah, and if anything, that just means it was easier for her to learn English and immigrate to the U.S. Sure. That's very true. Very good counterpoints. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Anyway, let's get back to, to what she has to say next. Um, also, he missed a big part of this scam situation that the government put great effort to track down those scammers, unlike his own country, don't, who don't even care if someone was killed or raped or robbed. Whoa. Um, oh, there's a little bit of context here because we couldn't use the whole video. We no, I understand. Clips, right? Yeah. Okay. What she said was she was saying that I, I said all Chinese people are scammers because, you know, I made that video, you know, scam, to help Chinese scammers. people and Westerners yeah, to avoid scam, scams. Yeah, scams are everywhere in China. Right. Scammers are everywhere in China. Just to, to the pitfalls, where mm -hmm. to, to go. What to look out for. Yeah. But then, okay, maybe you can pick up what she's saying here. So basically, she she's basically calling you out for generalizing, right? Mm -hmm. Even though you didn't. It's, a, it's yeah. an educational video, yeah. right? An educational video series, we can say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she is using her own hypocrisy mm -hmm. to generalize your country. And... I'm not going to say anything. I've never been to South Africa, right? Yeah. And I'm not going to defend South Africa. I don't know yeah. what, you know, what actually happens there unless you tell me sure. you know, stuff from your that. own perspective. But mm -hmm. she is using that exact argument that she hates so very much yeah. to do the exact same thing about your country. Yeah, I know. I, I don't think she really knows much about South Africa. Fair enough. I yeah. mean, from, from making a statement like that. But to be honest, I would agree with her. That, you know, <laughs> South you Africa go. doesn't, well, at least some parts of the government don't really care or just don't have the resources to care about that but the thing is the fact that she's able to generalize an entire country sure and then criticize me for doing it using external media and again this is i want you guys <laughs> out there i'm yeah. looking at you guys right yeah. now mm. um i want you guys out there to not look at this like some sort of i gotta find this woman and write what i think in her comment section it's not what we're no, doing no, no. the whole point of this is to break this down as a very almost hive mind kind of thing that this goes is, on yeah. with 
really bad nationalism, mm-hmm. right? So this does not represent the majority of Chinese people, but this represents the people that keep coming after us and the people that are pushing soft power. Yeah, absolutely, and and absolutely do not. That's why we're not sharing a channel name. We're not sh- saying who she is. We don't want people to go out and, and attack her or anything like that. We just want to show you because this is a fantastic look into the psyche of hypernationalism. Much, yeah, and and quite a, a large segment of the population these days in China. These days, yeah. 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 Anyway, let's see what she says next. Secondly, he came from a middle to lower class background. He came to China, the land of opportunity, was empty handed. (laughs) Not only China gives him a wife, work opportunity. Can you pause it there for a second? DM, please. Okay. That was that's too spicy. When when does country <laughs> when did country start giving wives? Dude, when I went to the wife store, they just gave it to me for free. I don't. You know? I don't. She had no choice. I don't think it's fair to say that a country gave a person a wife because well, that's the mentality, dude. Do, do you understand how much hard work it is to get into a relationship with someone sure. that you fall in love with? Sure. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. So it's like imagine I travel to Israel. Sure. And I've met someone there and I fell in love and and married them right Israel didn't give me a wife no no I earned my own wife there's actually a bit of a funny situation (laughs) yeah yeah. is that like when I walk down the streets and people say you stole our Chinese women right you stole our Chinese women and you took her back or like you're gonna take her away from us my question to them is like do you think that she would actually date you would she want you right it has nothing to do with race at that point right it's like just possessions right and then they'll come back at me and say well, how would you feel if I went to your country and took a white woman, right? And I'm like, I go freaking pat you on the back. That's yeah, awesome. So I don't care. It, yeah. It's not mine. Yeah. You know? So that's that's a funny situation is you're looking at her mentality right now, yeah, yeah. which represents a lot of collectivist societies. It's like our people stay within our people, right? Mm-hmm. So they look at like a biracial relationship, almost like a slap in the face, right? right. A stolen good. I mean, look, that that's... Everywhere in the world you see that. Sure. I've seen sure. it all elsewhere. Anyway, let's continue and see what she... Let her finish her sentence. I was just going to say, do you... Does the Chinese government give any kind of, like, incentive to marrying fellow Chinese people? Or is it just, like... I mean, actually, right now, I mean, we know the 56 minorities in China, right? Yeah, the yeah. government gives incentive to people that marry... Han people that marry into minority families kind of dilute the whole situation, right? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, there's no... There's no, no real pitfalls of marriage. No, but uh, I'll tell you what, that if you do get married in China as a foreigner, you have no rights and you're no, just no, basically no. a visitor. You don't gain anything. So you, don't, you won't no. gain anything. There's anyway, no yeah, part. we've, we've yeah. got to see what this, this uh, lovely lady has to say. Uh, career and money, where is his gratitude? He credits everything he gets to his own hard work. Come on, can he get even half what he get now if he's still in his own country? There's, there's no reason to defend yourself here oh, because just, this is more that. of the classist absolute nonsense. Yeah. It's, yeah, I mean, like, you can, uh, basically, I, what I get from this is that she thinks China is so awesome yeah. and gives so much to people with such little opportunity back home that mm. we need to say, I love you, China, you are my country. I owe you every... I actually know a guy that did that on video. I remember that. Oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> Next <Yeah>. episode. <laughs> yeah. I just have to say one thing about opportunity. Sure. Um, and that is opportunity doesn't count for anything sure. unless someone takes that opportunity and makes something out of it. Right. So let's just say there's a lump of clay right. sitting there. Whether you take that lump of clay and you ignore it or throw it in the trash or you sculpt, sculpt it into a priceless sculpture, you know, it's the person that makes this the priceless sculpture you know, that actually then reaps the rewards. Sure. So opportunity or not, it's what I did with opportunity. Right. I, mean, I would have done it anywhere else in the world. Of course. Anyway, let's, right. uh, let's move on. Last but not least, let me give him a friendly reminder. Even though he badmouths China and the Chinese people to his Western audience, because he has the protection from the Great Wall, which prevented mainland Chinese from watching his videos. Or don't even understand his videos, even uh, because they don't, he doesn't put subtitles in his videos intentionally. <laughs> intentionally? Here's eh? the hypocrisy. Oh. This is really the coup de grace. This. Okay. She thinks that what I'm doing is trying to sneakily badmouth China behind China's back by not putting Chinese subtitles. 
Whereas, remember, her videos are all in Chinese with no English subtitles sure, sure. where she's discussing politics in the West. It's the possession theory, right? Yeah. It's that if you talk about China as a foreigner, you're always going to be an outsider, like she said in the beginning of the video, mm -hmm. right? The possession theory is that because you're talking about China, you have to make it for the Chinese audience because it's about their stuff, not your stuff, right? She doesn't follow the same possession theory about her American stuff, right? right. She can do whatever she wants because she's in America, but China, that's off limits. That's the center of the goddamn universe, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It's silly. It, anyway. It pretty much also has the implication that if Chinese people did watch your videos and know what you were saying, that they would just like come out and lynch you or something. That's the funny thing, yeah, DM. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for saying that. Yeah. Because the majority of people that we know, particularly Chinese people abroad, absolutely love what we're doing. Yeah, everyone you know? that's approached me on the street has been great. We've never had a yeah. hater come up to us on the street in China. No, you know, they I mean, love. Lots, we love your videos. You uh, tell the truth. Yeah. Finally, you tell the truth. You a know? lot of Chinese people have approached me on the streets in yeah. Shenzhen. It used to happen three, four times a week. Right. And they would want to take photos with me. Right. They'd be very happy to meet me. They'd it's not because really you're like famous. They like yeah. what you do. Yeah, and absolutely. they like what we do, right? So reasonable people like what we do. Yeah. Anyway, let's finish this up with this lady. We're, you know, dragging on, dragging on. <laughs> he always says, bye, Chinaman, to uh, random people who annoys him on the street. It is super rude and racist. Oh, the new tactic, the yeah. old racist card, right? First mm. of all, I don't think I've ever heard you use the word Chinaman in Never. my entire life. You, you know what it you know what it is? What? And it's only been in a few of my videos is you know how Chinese kids especially you walk past they'll shout Why Guoren and they point at you? Yeah, yeah. Forward. It happens yeah, yeah, it happens all the time. Sure. So I usually when they shout out to me Why Guoren, I shout back Zhong Guoren, which Chinese basically person, yeah. means Chinese person. It's a tit for tat thing, and I think it's and hilarious. It's, everyone laughs. Yeah, it's a funny thing to do. I even made a T-shirt that says Wash a Why Guoren, Nisha Zhong Guoren. Right, right. Because that way, when I walk through public, it stops them from like ah. They look at like, it and they're like, like oh, I was gonna ask that. Yeah, That's I was hilarious. gonna say that. Yeah, it's all in good fun. So, like you say, this is a new tactic, mm. and this is something that I'm immune to. Mm. Okay, I know that most people in the Western world they hate being called racist mm. it's as soon as they even get a hint of someone labeling them racist they back down sure because they're afraid because it can destroy their career right, it can destroy right, their job right. it can destroy you know their life but being a, a white south african i've been called a racist whether i like it or not just my, by being born, yeah right? my yeah. entire life right. so people can call me racist from sundown to sunset same thing sunrise to sunset <laughs> sorry and uh, it doesn't bother me sure but it's really funny to see them coming out the woodwork with this because right. they think if they call me racist or well, they call anyone who has an opinion about China racist, sure. it's going to shut them down. Right. Meanwhile, it does nothing to me, right. but it actually makes me chuckle right. and want to do more. Fair enough. That makes sense. Fair enough. Anyway, let's see. I actually do a similar thing, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the States, like when someone comes up to me like, hey, Wero, I just go, what's up, Moreno? Which is okay. like, if they're going to call me Whitey, then I'll just call them Darky. Right. Yeah, okay, <laughs> makes sense. Why not? Maybe it's a little bit messed up. May people probably don't take it as a good stride here because we have a lot of... Uh, I don't yeah. know, issues in the States with that kind of thing as sure, well. Sure, sure. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. 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 What, what we're trying to point out here is this is a, a tactic that's been coming out a lot. Because, look, Chinese people inherently are very discriminatory. Mm -hmm. I'm making a video, which I'll be releasing soon, about that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just part of the culture. Mm -hmm. There's always, like, a, you know, outsiders and us, mm -hmm. you know? So there's always this, like, foreigner, this, if you've got a different color skin, they'll say that out to you. Mm -hmm. It's very, very much this way. But now they've figured out that... By it's, it's labeling a sensitivity, racist, right? yeah. yeah, by labeling yeah. people racist. So they'll right. be like, that's the first thing they say. Oh, you make a, an advert about China, someone using a chopstick or something, they're like, don't do that, don't it's do racist. That, it's racist. Meanwhile, in the beginning, they're like, totally fine. That's what DM said is like, the, it's a bit of a contentious issue in yeah. the US, like his example, right? It's a very good way to shut up anyone in America. Exactly, so they know that now. Yeah. And they're like, ah, oh, you can't say that. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, let's, let's finish yeah. this up. Yeah. Okay, what are you going to say next? I can't wait. Mm, what can I expect from a guy mm, from South Africa, middle to lower class, who didn't go to college and doesn't even know basic statistics concepts? So I don't know basic statistics. That's fine. Yeah. She I can mean, say what she wants. That's fine. But yeah, you know, it's the whole class. 30% of all people don't understand statistics. Hey, good, good stat, dude. I guess you do understand <laughs> stats. Yeah. All right, cool. Nice. Yeah. Well, that was very interesting. Wrap that up. We went a little over time on yeah. that one. Let's, but let's move on to the next Again, section. guys, just quickly, oh, yeah. though, a little disclaimer. Do not, do not try to find this woman on YouTube. Yeah. That is not what we're trying to do. No. Just a good kind of little piece, a little example of what hypernationalism. Fantastic look into the psyche. Sure. All right, let's go into the next one. 
Ah, Guanxi Quarter. Quarter. So yes. Guanxi in Chinese means relationships. It yes. can mean uh, I rely on you for something, you rely mm. on me for something. So it's actually an accolade mm. in China. If you say, I have a lot of Guanxi, you hear a lot of foreigners do this, and they get there and they think they've cracked the China yeah, code. Yeah, exactly. They're like, I got so much Guanxi. I met a dude in a I bar know a guy. It's I know a guy. Drinks, yeah. right? Well, dude, in the West, people say, I got connections. It's the same thing. Mm. That's what I'm trying to make the example here. Yeah. But uh, it also means relationship. So in Guanxi Corner, what we're going to do is take personal uh, questions that we get from yeah. people that are in interracial relationships. It doesn't even have to be Chinese, but because yeah. we've had a lot of experience. We get, we look, both falls. you and I get a lot of um, these sort of questions mm. in our patrons mm -hmm. and uh, often just through email or Facebook. So we've decided we're going to like pick one a week. Sure. And obviously we're going to disguise the original sender, but right. DM is going to read this out to us. So can you yeah. read the question there, DM? You got it. So this comes from a patron. Okay says, hi there, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, and just like you guys, I'm in a relationship with a beautiful Chinese girl from Guangdong province. She's currently with me in Missouri on a green card. She's divorced once, and we have been married for now for one year. We've been trying to have a child, but we haven't been successful yet. I love her very much, but she's insisting that we move to her hometown and stay with her family for at least a year because she's worried that her parents will get old and fall ill. I told her that I'm the only source of income, so I can't just leave my job and stay in China for a year. As understanding as I'm trying to be, she's basically making this whole thing a make or break situation. Is this normal? Thank you, Dia. That's yeah. kind of sucky. <laughs> uh, I feel you, dude. First of all, thanks for being patrons. Um, yeah. That's yeah. where they support us, patron.com slash serpentzda in low 86. I'm finding it very hard to hold back on this Please one. be nice. I'm going to be nice. This guy's got feelings. Yeah, of course you he know, does. His wife's got feelings. I made a video, Are Chinese Women Heartless? Mm -hmm. I suggest that um, you watch that. He's probably seen it. Yeah, well, let's be a little more personal. Family comes first. Right. And it, screw your income, screw your feelings, screw you, because if my parents are going to be sick, I'm going there and I'm going to go and stay with yeah. them. You know, that happened to another friend of mine very recently where mm -hmm. his wife, also a very similar situation, his wife's mother is elderly and uh -huh. getting sick. So she's like, I have to go and stay with her because she's getting ill. Sure. Okay, whatever. So she went because he couldn't leave his job. Right. And she stayed there for like six months or something right. and kept every time. It was supposed to be like two months. Right. And then every time, oh no, she's still sick, so I'm going to extend it. Stay, 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 stay for, for bloody forever, right? Mm. And then the mother didn't die or anything, still kicking around. And then she came back. And then it was again, like after a couple of months, oh, my mother's sick, so I have to go back. And she just kept going. And then she was like, oh, my mother's got some kind of cancer that can't be cured in China. So sure. we're, we're going to bring her to the States and right. brought the mother over. And, and it just ended up being a huge thing. Anyway, long story short, mother's still alive, still no problems. My friend had to, you know, live without his wife for like the better part of a year. And okay. it's, a, it's an ongoing thing. It's annoying. And I don't want to sound heartless here because I understand what the family thing is sure, like. Sure. But remember, as a husband, you will take second seat, back seat. Right. You not know? always. And this definitely in this situation, for oh, sure. Dude, like, you, you may say that not always, but in 99% of all of the situations I've dealt with, mm -hmm. when it comes to at, at least the older Chinese generation, remember, this mm. guy's wife's yeah. probably in her yeah. 40s. She's divorced yeah. once, right? The older um, Chinese generation... The parents will always come first, especially if she's been divorced already. I think there's a huge bias because yeah. uh, the people that are going to reach out are the people that have problems and yeah, issues. Yeah, like, yeah. And if I can extract a piece of advice that I think you're trying to get at with your story, yeah. is that you can't just go somewhere and uproot your life based on the pretense that they're going to die, right? Yeah. Like, it, they may fall ill, they're growing old. And my wife says the same thing. And she's like, well, what am I going to do when they, you know, get old and grow old and die and all this kind of stuff? Like, we have to go be with them and all this kind of stuff. I, I feel this, right? Yeah. At the same time, there's got to be a tit for tat because that's not only your losing situation. Yeah. And you should maybe capitulate a little bit and say, I will take some time off work and go over with you. Mm. You know, we will go visit them if something happens, right? Sure. But we can't completely give up everything that we've built here. And maybe it's an excuse. Maybe she doesn't like living in Missouri. It's maybe she absolutely it hates is. it, right? I mean, it could be something like that. But there's no thought of what could be lost. Mm. You know, and that is a very Chinese thing. But sure. from what I've experienced. Sure. Because they're probably all okay right. over there. You know, fairly stable. Wants to go back. And I've noticed this a we lot. can't lately. assume that. But... Yeah. I've noticed this a lot um, of that demographic. Recently, two subscribers that I met up have gone through a similar thing. Where they've met fairly wealthy or fairly okay middle mm. class chinese women in their 40s and 50s okay parents still alive and everything mm. 
and they meet these American guys. Both of these guys are American. They get married. Mm. They want the they want the stability of having a husband because they're divorced. Most mm. of them. They already have a kid. Mm. Uh, or whatever, and they need that support. They need a husband in their life, right? But they don't actually want to live outside of China because right. especially women of that age mm -hmm. or men of that age, Chinese men and women of that age, they way prefer China. They find it incredibly difficult to adjust to a Western lifestyle. Sure. And sure. so if they're not in the thick of it all the time and they don't have their little market that can get their vegetables in right. the morning and they don't have their family and relatives and the way everything works and the hospital oh, it's a system. real big hate of change. Yeah, yeah right. it's, it's about change. And, you know, when you're and you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And I think it goes the other way. Like foreigners. <laughs> Absolutely. Take a 56 year old foreign guy and stick him in China. Right. And nine times out of 10, he's going to have a hard time. Adjusting. It's exactly the same yeah. thing. Right. And that's just one of the huge pitfalls and caveats mm -hmm. of these interracial relationships that with older people like yeah, i said yeah. i think it's very important to point out that the younger generation of china is much easier to adapt yeah but right. even our wives have huge issues big problems yeah big problems issues. i mean it's cult it's a culture shock i just want mm. i want to yeah my heart goes out to this guy it sounds pretty terrible um but i really don't think you know it sounds like it's make or break but i really don't think there's no room for negotiation and just be reasonable don't lose your temper what would you do in that situation i would go i would go over Right. Okay. I would go over and I would visit, but I would book the tickets for a specific time and say, listen, I'm going to do this for you, but our life is here and you got to make a choice. If you're going to give me this ultimatum, do you enjoy your life here? Do you want to stay here with me? She says, yes. Then I'll say, happy to go for a trip, happy to help out even financially if they're mm -hmm. going through some problems. Right. Sure. That's what I would do. What about you? I would uh, go over for as long as I could take off work. Sure. So yeah, you, reasonable. You, you do like it two weeks or whatever, whatever you can do a week. Doesn't sure. matter. I go with her right. to stay with the parents and stuff, and I'd let her stay on for a month or two, oh, but with stipulation yeah. that she's got to come back. If she, if yeah, unless if the parents can... suddenly go to degrade right. into like radioactive level <laughs> cancer or something. <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. I'd, I'd I'd let her stay on, you yeah. know, spend more time with the family because you can't lose your job and jeopardize your work because when you go to China as a as a foreigner, you can't do anything. No, you right. know, and unless the guys like got a degree and. Um, it meets all these stringent requirements to get a work permit, he won't be able to work. Right. But most Chinese people, they think, oh, you can just come and teach English, but you can't. No, It'll no. be illegal if you do right. it, you know, and you can get into trouble. So you have no power there, and you're in their system, and it's very difficult. So I do suggest you go over there for as long as you can stay, let her stay, and then you come back. Fair and enough. And she follows later. And if she wants to stay there until her parents peg off, then, you know, let her do that and shows that she doesn't care about you enough. Okay. Yeah. I hope that helped, Patron. Thank you so much for your support, by the way. Yeah. Well, I guess it's time to move on to our next section, which is Worldview, right? Worldview. So, Worldview is where we're going to talk about things that are happening in the world, right? Yeah. Okay. I guess I didn't really have to explain that. You guys are not <laughs> stupid. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What is your Worldview point for today? Well, recently there was a case of the bubonic plague. <laughs> what is this, the Middle Ages? Yeah. Well, you know, it was pretty harsh. Right. A lot of my ancestors died. D, especially DMs. Yeah, exactly. Now the thing is that the Black Plague is a bad thing, mm. right? Um, and it you don't say. It shouldn't really be around. <laughs> no. But it just no. resurfaced in Mongolia, right up yeah. there where we were on the border of yeah. Russia and, and China, China, right? Yeah. Right there. And it came about because uh, a couple mm. ate raw marmot. <laughs> ate the... I can't laugh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it's kind of hilarious, though. Who um, eats a marmot? Who eats a raw marmot? Well, Why eat it raw? Apparently, it's because it's a traditional remedy okay. for illness. Sure. But guess what? That makes sense. It's a remedy for illness. It's a remedy that gives you illness. Oh. It's a remedy for illness. You figured it out. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. So, I'm so sick of not being sick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need to be sick. Here's a, here's a remedy for <laughs> sickness. They just misunderstood. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they ate this raw marmot. And they, <laughs> okay, sorry. They, so, yeah. No, we're, we're so, what does so, marmot look yeah, like? It's like a little prairie dog looking thing. Oh, okay. Um, and they, they got the Black Plague, and they had to quarantine the whole place. It was a huge thing. And, wow. Yeah, um, and they died. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think. I'm pretty Rest sure they did. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, but let's let's go into why somebody would eat a raw marmot. Okay, I'm going to take a Chinese perspective on this. That's right. not fair because they're Mongolian. But, um, it's in that same region. Sure, I mean, I yeah. think like folk remedies, in it, we don't even have to say Asia. Say no. anywhere, right? Go to Ecuador or something, right? There's going to be some... I go to Africa. Which doctors, yeah. There's going to be some sort of traditional belief that I personally think someone just completely made up. Right. right? 
And it's outlandish and it sounds crazy to us, but when you have your grandmother's 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 that says, you got to eat this marmot kidney, yeah. it's going to sort you out. And then you just die, but you don't have the scientific background to understand how disease works. Yeah. Then nobody really understands. And they're like, well, it just didn't work out. I was sick anyway, and that's, that's why I died. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So if I relate this to China, traditional Chinese medicine is a slightly higher level, in my opinion, slightly higher level, more well-documented version of folk remedies. Yeah. Right. Um, a lot of things are made up. Like mm -hmm. Vivi's mom has said things that other Chinese people absolutely don't do Believe, yeah, right yeah. and it depends on the region right so it's just a it's a wide network of yeah. traditional remedies right so i understand how this happens people in china do the same thing right? yeah and i want you to talk uh before i go into a personal really sad story actually mm -hmm. you uh why do you think this happened well like like you said it's all about folk remedies and traditional stuff you know like in south, south africa we have the witch doctors the mm. sangomas and they make mm. up all this garbage and i literally think they just on the spot make up remedies <laughs> They'll be like, this person comes in with a sickness and they'll be like, go slaughter a chicken, throw it in the west corner of your room for <laughs> 26 hours, then dry it in the sun on a Wednesday right. and then eat its toenail and you'll right. get better. Right. They just make it up on the spot. Sure. You know, but it is, it's traditional remedies. But like you said, places like China, which has a long history, they have mm. these traditional remedies that have kind of been refined and passed down and some of it works and some of it doesn't. It's just a bunch of folk remedy stuff mm. and everywhere in the world has this and so it's absolutely that sure but i can just say that what we've learned from this is do not eat raw marmot absolutely not mm. absolutely not very quick aside yeah uh yeah story very very tragic story it's very fairly recent mm. um my wife's cousin very wealthy man but quite young he was only 38 mm -hmm. he uh he got stage four lung cancer didn't smoke right just real fluke Really bad situation. A lot of people growing up in China end up with cancer at a quite a young age these days. Mm. And, uh, you know, his parents were very wealthy. So first off, they went to Australia. Mm -hmm. and they got started getting treatment. Doctors were like, yo, this looks really bad. Went to see a specialist in America and started doing chemo, lost all his hair. It was tragic stuff because I knew yeah. him, right? Yeah, really yeah. nice guy. Spoke for perfect English. Um, and he had to stay optimistic in front of his two little kids and his Sucks, wife, man. right? Yeah. Just had these two kids. Nothing worse than cancer absolutely heartbreaking like it made me like choke up when i saw him this bald young guy right yeah. with a huge bright future ahead of him anyway his parents were just so appalled at the chemo like effects right sure. like he was failing in health but it was working right, right. like it was slowing the cancer process down mm -hmm. and he hated it but he supported it he, he was going to keep going with it but his parents were like no it's because you didn't drink enough soup. Look at what this Western medicine is doing to you. It's literally killing you. I understand some of the logic behind that. Sure, sure. Flying back to China, get some TCM specialists, started giving him soups, started giving him like all these herbs and pills. Scraping and, and scrape, stuff. Tons of cupping and scraping. Yeah. Draining of the blood. Guy died within a year. You know? Sure, And sure. now his, his family's still there without him. It you sucks, know? sucks. And that's, that's why I have such a chip on my shoulder. It's not anecdotal evidence. It's just... You got to look in the face of science sometimes, you know, yeah. it's tough for the old generation. Yeah. And yeah. science says don't eat rare prairie dog don't meat eat or whatever, marmots. Yeah, beyond rare. Yeah. Just fully raw. So, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't it's eat time, meat. time for our final section, which yes. is our Q&A section. Questions. I have to preface this a little bit. Okay. Um, we do not have super chats, so highlighted comments are difficult for us to see. There are none, right? Yeah. But we do have someone called DM. Yes, DM is going to be reading us some of the interesting questions he's seen you guys ask during the stream. So let's go on with the first question, shall we? All right. So um, there weren't that many questions, to be honest. It was a lot of uh, chaos in the chats. That's the usual. But there was one person asking, Winston, did you vote in the South African election? Okay. Uh, the answer to that is uh, no. It's quite difficult i know expatriates have a way to do it mm -hmm. but i also i'm going to be completely honest with anyone who might be thinking this is the way i feel but i absolutely can't stand south africa and if i have nothing to do with it ever again in my life i'll be happy sure well at least the political situation yeah right? absolutely it's a beautiful country and sure. you know the people are, are great and everything but south africa you know it's a lost cause as far as i'm concerned mm -hmm. and uh there's there's nothing to be done and that might sound defeatist but uh I've got my reasons. Or are you, uh, just as I don't want to yeah. keep going, harping on this, but sure. the people that you could choose between, right, in, mm -hmm. in said election if you were to vote, is there even a massive difference between them? Uh, yeah, yes, there is, but it's rigged. So there's, uh, no, there's no point. You've got, uh, as far as I know, and I'm a bit out of touch, but you've got the ANC, 
you've got the economic freedom fighters or freedom front whatever they call themselves and you've got uh, the democratic alliance um and the democratic alliance is the only safe choice because the others are just communist and they want oh, to destroy okay. the country so. that's a little known fact there's a lot of communists in the parties in south africa well yeah the anc is a communist they, bas- basically the, communist. are they like super tight with china then uh, yeah, in, yeah, they definitely are. Absolutely. Love that Belt and Road. Are you guys getting belted? <laughs> well, who knows? Yeah. Anyway, the, the whole point is that it's a corrupt system. And, okay. you know, they keep uncovering electoral fraud and stuff. So uh-huh. I feel like you go and you vote, you know, it's kind of stupid to do it. Anyway. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Fair cool. Enough. What's our next question? So um, the next one was asking if you guys are planning to do a SoCal group ride. SoCal group ride. Um, I guess that means like L.A. area. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because we're, we're basically based near LA. <laughs> let me let me let me tell you a little little <laughs> yeah. thing though. Right. We were good. Me and Winston had this amazing idea that when we were in Huizhou for our shop, we were gonna do these like group rides, right? Mm. So we let people borrow. We had like a bazillion bikes, right? Sure, sure. We're gonna go out, have all these people do it, and ride with us and stuff. Until we realized what a massive liability that would Jeez, be. Yeah. Because when we had subscribers, you had this happen a couple of times. You mm-hmm. had subscribers, you let them ride a scooter and then they crash. Yeah, yeah. And then they're all, I don't know if they're pissy or not, but there's a big liability there, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. If we were to do it here, everyone's kind of of their own volition. Yeah. It's kind of nice. It sounds actually kind of fun. But I hope you guys, if we do organize something like that, have one of those intercoms so everyone's <laughs> kind of tied in. Yeah, it's know? kind of nice. Look, it's it's a great idea in theory, but I think if we're going to do it, we're going to have to do a very strict RSVP and limit the numbers. Sure. Because, uh, not to not to sound like oh, we're so popular, we're going to have too many, but when we did our last subscriber meetup, it turned out to be <laughs> ridiculous. Um, so many people turned up that it was actually uncomfortable because... Like, we had to go in the parking lot. Yeah, th- there wasn't enough space for everyone to fit. Nobody had a great time. So I think if we were to do it and we could control it a little bit more, the numbers, mm-hmm. then everybody could have a great time. Sure, so, maybe do it multiple yeah. times. Let's, let's talk about that. That's I a don't great think idea. that's a bad yeah. idea at all. Awesome. What cool. do we got next, DM? Um, so next up was somebody saying, where is the next place you're going to conquer? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. We have a couple on the board, and yes. I'm just going to spill the beans. Uh, sure. One of them is India. Of course. And one of them is South Korea, mm-hmm. and one of them is Japan. Yeah. We don't know which order we're going to do right now. Um, I think the most of the audience would like to see India because it's crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. a real adventure. But, I mean, I just had a baby. I didn't have a baby. Uh, my wife just had a baby. Um and I think uh, like a shorter, safer country right off the bat would be a little bit better. Do you think um, it's going to get better the older your kid gets or is it going to get worse? You're going to be, I've you... just got, my kid just got into primary school. Why my you... kid just got into kindergarten. <laughs> oh, I'm not trying to stay this up. I'm going on a trip either way, right? All right, good. Right. I understand. But she needs length. more. Yeah. So if I'm going to do India, it's going to take a long time to do the whole country, right? You do oh, something yeah. like South Korea, you can do it in a month. Right. Yeah. yeah. India is going to take a long time. Yeah. To do. yeah just to, to let you guys know, like with Vietnam, the way we do it is we usually go for like three weeks to a month. Yeah. We go somewhere right. or two months. Yeah. yeah. Depending on depending on how much content we want to do. Right. And we are nonstop yeah. writing and filming <laughs> every day. Single. That's why some people might be confused as to where we are at any given time. And that's because we do these trips. We film a lot. And then we come back, we edit and we do another trip. And some of it overlaps. In the past few months, we've been in China, mm-hmm. Vietnam. We were in Taiwan fairly recently. Yes. Hong, Hong Kong. Kong uh, near Mexico. Yeah. Back to China. You guys, you can't yeah. pinpoint where we are unless we're live. <laughs> yeah, like this, yeah. So it's tough. I mean, yeah. we're it's super fun, but it's incredibly hard to keep that schedule done. I really want to do India. Uh, I do. I want really, to do India. I, I love the idea. Mm. I've been there before, mm. and uh, I absolutely love the idea of doing India. But at the same time, like you, recently we've been doing a lot of these like crazy. Dude, I just want to yeah. break. Yeah, maybe if we do South Korea, it could be interesting, but I don't want it to be boring. So no. whatever we do has got to be outlandish. Sure, Vietnam was. Freaking hectic, though. Yeah. In China, it was always hectic, right? Always. So we're always in these hectic places. Yeah, and we're talking about, like, traffic. Where yeah, we yeah, almost danger. die every yeah, time yeah. we ride. Yeah. If you've seen the stuff that, of us riding in Vietnam and stuff, you'll, you'll know what we're in talking China. about. China, yeah. obviously, yeah. Um, mm. That being said, that's what makes the content interesting. So it's yeah. a tit for tat, right? Like yeah. you said, if we do South Korea and Japan, we're going to have to really dive deep into, like, really interesting cultural stuff. We're going to have to do something no one's ever stuff. done before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we're, th- those are all in the works. Yeah. To, all right. To answer, so, answer that succinctly. Yeah. What's our next question there, Dean? So this is less of a question. We have some uh, shade from shade. E- Evil Uncle Boston Matt. Ooh. Okay. He says that you guys are too boring for live. You're okay. not engaging with the audience. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that uh, it's disrespectful here in America. We don't think, we don't, sh- uh, 
view kindly on that. Okay, All I, right. interesting. I have something to say about that. Okay, uh, what's his name again? Evil Uncle Dave. Well, his name was Boston Matt. Oh, his why did was... I say Dave? Evil <laughs> Uncle, <laughs> Evil Uncle Boston Matt. Here's my message to you. All right, you just turned into like a, an American woo mao at that point. You said we don't like that in America. I well, don't think that's fair to say because you're American. You're American. Yeah. Well, I'm I have not a American. very different opinion. DM's loving the show. You speaking for him now? Huh? <laughs> yeah. I think exactly. that might may be a sarcastic remark, by the way. This actually boils down to, um, you know, my recent video said, are Chinese men cowards? And sure. people take a lot of, like, obviously it's a, it's a title. It's a spicy title. Sure. But there's a reason for that. It's because sure. the people that attack me always say, we Chinese people or like we chinese don't like you we chinese think this we chinese so they they label themselves as all chinese that's why the thing right. is like are right. chinese right. men like they say all chinese men want to beat me up or whatever mm. which is not true so someone like that saying we americans it's the same logic it's like, come right? on man it's like, come on. Do you, don't you believe in individuals i'm quite different to you i'm sure dm put that back on you well oh, someone just said that you're american now brother Aw, sweet. Nice. Yeah, even though right. I'm just a visitor, I love it here. DM, got a question for you about that, right? Shoot. Um, so this dude, did. when did he send that remark? Did he send that during the Q&A? No, that was like, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes okay, ago. Okay, so now, hopefully, he's going to go back into that uh, that chat. He's going to be like, oh, shit, I should have waited for the Q&A at the end. <laughs> you jumped the gun, buddy. Jump the gun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anything um, else? The only other thing is more of a comment, but okay. it was just someone saying that you guys have it's getting confusing with how many channels you have because you've got sure. you got Lao Y86, Serpent ZA, ADB right. China, this one, and then uh, uh, Sasha has her channel, right? right. Baby has her right. channel, so, right. et cetera. I'm, yeah. I'm going to apologize because I know it's confusing, but just keep in mind, like, we've regimented a, a weekly schedule yeah. now, so you're, we'll go through an order, right? Yeah. Monday is ADB China. Right. Tuesday is nothing. Yes. Wednesday is me, Lao 86 Thursday is podcast. But every only every second Thursday. Thursday. Okay, now getting... I can see why you're getting confused. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. It's, look, it's actually very it's very <laughs> simple. We we initially thought that we'd put this on the ADV China channel. Yeah, right? yeah. But we realized that that would be a mistake because mm. from the very beginning, you can go back to the very first ADV China video mm. that's on there. It's always been the same format. It's sure. always been the same thing. It's us riding around on bikes and, it, and we now alternate between on the bikes, off the bikes. We don't want to break that up and dilute the channel. Um, we also want to talk about things like if we tried to talk about for instance that woman that that lady who said all that nonsense right mm -hmm. on adb it would seem out of place and a bit petty sure, as sure. if we're trying to reply to her and stuff right. whereas here we get to sit down in a long form discussion sure. and that's some, unscripted yeah unscripted we have some well we never script our stuff that's anyway true, but we have a topic but this yeah. is a proper podcast sure. so you and i can sit down we can look at things we can talk in a long form sure it's an hour long right. rather than 15 20 minutes right um and so i think anyone who's used to the normal adv china stuff would click off if they saw this like hour -long sure sure thing coming along right. so and of course a lot of you are going to be like absolutely yeah. i wouldn't but i my personal example and mm -hmm. reason and i don't want to go on about this but yeah. i've i've i'm fans of a lot of channels right sure I'm, fa uh, for example, let's say H3 podcast, right? Mm -hmm. I watch the H3 podcast channel and separate from his channel, right? But then I have channels that I really love, but then when they put a podcast up on the normal content stuff, I'm like, ah, you see that number? It's like hour and then it's like 10 minutes, yeah, right? Yeah. Just like what you said. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to watch that, you know? It also Mental. gives people a choice because there are certain people that absolutely hate me and don't mm. want to watch my stuff. Sure. Then sure. they can watch your stuff. Right. Because they like you and vice versa, right? Mm. And then people that just really have no desire to see motorbikes and, and adventures because they're boring people. Sure, sure. You know? So those boring people that don't want to see that, they can see us in this sure. scenario and talking. A little, because this is our first episode, yeah. this is not going to be about motorcycles. I yeah. know the helmets and the thumbnails just kind of are simple now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, we, we might we, include some trip details. Yeah, we're going to so. talk about sure. things, but yeah, this is not all like about... Our favorite bikes. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, and we're, we're working on getting this onto, uh, you know, sort of podcast. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so you iTunes, can, yeah, that, that, that type of thing. So that's in the works, and hopefully that'll be a thing so you can actually just listen to it if you don't want to watch it. I wanted to say a massive thanks, first of all, yeah. to everyone that tuned in for the first episode. I can't believe how many of you. DM, how many people were, were here? Um, Do you have any idea? I don't know where I can even see that. It doesn't here. even matter. But were there a lot of comments and stuff rolling in? Oh, yeah. Very surprised for a new channel. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much. Yeah, Especially thanks. once I uh, made my appearance. Oh, it was only you. It was yeah. DM. Yeah. And by <laughs> the way, those of you wondering who DM is, you're just going to have to keep wondering. It'll come out eventually. Yeah. Um, Maybe. <laughs> yeah, but he's, uh, he's here to help us. And whenever we do a podcast, he's going to be show. here. He's going to be part of the team. Mm -hmm. uh, so a big welcome to DM, by the way. Yeah, everyone um, drop an F in the chat. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, fantastic. Isn't that bad? Is F is for oh, yeah. to pay respects. Dude, you just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. just shot DM. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> that just shows you how out of touch I am with like today's kids. <laughs> I'm in my thirties now. Yeah. Guys. Give me a break. Well, it's probably time for us to wrap up. Eh? Yeah. yeah. So um let's let's this will go the... live, by the way. Yeah. What do you mean? This is live. Right afterwards, I'm saying this will go oh, live. This, you this... guys can watch it if you missed it. Yeah. Um, so let's just finish off by giving you the schedule. So, yes. Uh, every single Monday, you can catch an ADV China at 1 p.m. EST. Is that right? 1 p.m. EST. Yeah. Yes. And, and uh, every single Wednesday, you can watch me, Larry Six, 1 p.m. EST. Fridays, you can catch me, Serpents at A, uh, 1 p.m. EST, just in time for a beer. And I know it sounds confusing with every other Thursday podcast thing, mm. but it's very simple because we'll try it a day ahead of time mm. to put like a reminder up there. Yeah, look, sub to the channel. It's yeah, absolutely. You sub to the channel. Click that little bell icon mm. or whatever, so you know. But yeah, every second Thursday, that means twice a month for those of you. Fortnightly for those British people out there. Sure, I don't know if people still say that, but they know what Fortnite is. It's, it's a least. freaking game yeah. now. Um, and that's pretty much it. So guys, sure. we would like to thank every single one of you, and we can't wait to see you in the next podcast and any one of our videos from now on. So, yeah. until next time, you know the drill. As always, stay awesome. Where's the drone? There's no drone. Mm.